Georges Maxime Thierry, next speaker is Sandy Thierry. I will try today something a little bit uh, risky. <laughs> I will try to live code <laughs> and show you how uh, at B2CK we manage projects uh, for Triton. Uh, so the idea is, uh, so as you will see, we use Docker to make the deployment. And we use one module for all the customization for a customer. So I will create a simple module uh, which, which customize uh, something. <laughs> and after that, uh, I will try to show you how we build the Docker image uh, for this project and how we deploy uh, the, the image on the on the server to, to be uh, to, and update it uh, later and make backups and, and so on. So first, I will start to create uh, the project. Uh, so usually, it starts by creating a folder. I start to first create a virtual environment. Usually, I name it like that, but it's my personal uh, taste. Uh, and a name, I put the prompt. Uh, okay, now I have my virtual environment in Python 3. Uh, and I recreate the module. For that, I use the cookie cutter uh, templates that uh, the Triton uh, project pro provide. Uh, I have a copy of the repository somewhere here. Okay, this is the cookie cutter uh, template. Uh, yeah, that's all. I'll run it. I have to name my modules, so I will name it to. Uh, Zero one nine. Uh, the prefix, as it's a custom module for from B2CK, I will use the B2CK prefix. Uh, so it, it propose me uh, a package name. I will accept it, and I'm going to work for the version 5.0. So I put the first. Uh, the 5.2 uh, and uh, it's the initial uh, version. Uh, the description. Uh, up. Uh, the author, of course, it's me. And uh, my email. Okay, uh, full name. Ah, oh yeah. Okay, and the website. Q. 
see what no. uh, I will not do scenario today. <laughs> it's it's bad, but <laughs> uh, now I have my project in the the folder. Uh, so by default, it's already filled with some uh, stuff uh, that are ready to be used. Uh, now, uh, something that we do at B2CK is we use only one modules for the, all the customization of the, from the customer. Uh, and we don't want to have one big modules with everything uh, spread everywhere and, and so on. We create uh, sub-modules uh, sub inside this module uh, where we group together uh, uh, a set of customization that works together. So for example, here I propose to change the party models to just add the field. So I will make a subfolder for a party custom. Yeah. Let's name it like that. Uh, of course, it must be a Python uh, uh, a Python module, so it needs to have uh, the init.py file. And the way we are going to use it to register the, the models that are, we are going to create, uh, what we do is that in the init of the main modules here, uh, instead of importing everything and register everything from there, uh, I will just import my submodule uh, party custom and in the register methods I will call a register method that I will I'm going to create in this module. And to avoid to repeat the name of the module in every submodule, I pass the name of the module as parameter like that. So now, on the, uh, up, on the party custom, on the, in the init.py, uh, yeah, uh, I will import the pool, create the, define the register method, and here I will register my, the stuff I'm going to create. So I prepare. OK. Uh, so I'm, as I'm going to customize party, I will import <coughs> party and just set uh, register uh, the class. As you can see here, now I'm almost, uh, it's looked like uh, the, in, uh, the usual init uh, file. So at some point, I could even take this submodule and create a, a real module out of it. Uh, and so it's not unusual. And uh, so I will create the class. And now we create uh, a field. Anyone uh, has a name? Want to add something to the party? No? No suggestion? No? What? OK. Uh, now I have to add it to the view if I uh, to be sh to, to to see it. So in the Triton CFG of the top level, I will just say load the party custom party XML file, and then here. Um, 
Looks good. Uh, the only thing here is that the view, I will not put it in, inside the, uh, oh, maybe I can, no? No, it will inside. No. Uh, I, I, um, we define uh, the views are uh, art coded inside the folder view, so it's already always on the top level. But usually what we do is that we prefix the the name of the view by the name of the module. Like that, we know uh, what belongs to which uh, submodules. And now I put the party form name. Yeah. It's party custom. OK. And now. We saw with our S. Uh, okay. So now I we just create the party custom party form. Okay. So now, <laughs> let's test <laughs> if it's working. Uh, so uh, for te here, for now, I have no Triton. So what I do is I just run uh, the installation uh, with the develop uh, commands. So it will fetch for me the right uh, Triton and the right dependency, and for that, I have to add party as a dependency. Oops, the web is working. So, yeah, install. Uh, I can run the test if I want. So I can run just like this. Uh, I just have to define the DB name. And I use memory like that, as it will test with SQLite by default. So it will be a, a test in memory. It should go fast normally. Uh, refers to, okay. I have a mi mistake somewhere. I think it's because the ID is not right. Uh, form. Ah, it's party underscore view form. So in my view, uh, in the Here, view form, and I will rename it. Okay, it's working. <laughs> so normally, 
the system is uh, right, uh, the, the, the module is uh, correct. Uh, now, uh, I don't need to look at what it looks because I know <laughs> what is going. <laughs> but uh, so the next step is to uh, create uh, a Docker image with this custom code inside. So for that, we use the uh, official Docker image that uh, Triton project publish. Uh, and we will just customize. So for those who don't know Docker, Docker is a, is a tool to build a container which will contain everything to run uh, the program. So it's a kind of minimal distribution where you have uh, the, what, what you need to run a, pro, uh, a program. And uh, uh, when you start it, it, it will just start the, uh, the program and running it inside this kind of small container which can be looked as a, um, a very light uh, virtual machine. And so everything is embedded inside, and it, you can uh, deploy on any machine and any kind of host because everything is self-contained. Okay, it's a little bit like if you create a static uh, executable for uh, of your program, but you don't need to compile it. Uh, it's a format uh, that works uh, like that. Um, so to, be, to build a Docker image, you need to create a Docker file. So, so instead of writing one, I will take uh, an existing one from a project. Uh, up, and I will just adapt it. It's easier. Uh, so first, I start with using, uh, I will first to package Python uh, inside the Docker, it's a little bit more complicated because uh, usually you just copy what you need inside your Docker file, uh, do your uh, Docker image. Uh, but with Python, you want to install it using the setup tools. Uh, then for that, we will first create, uh, run an image uh, that I called a builder, and inside it. I will create a package, uh, like if you publish it on uh, PyPy. Uh, and this package, I will reuse it to, uh, to install it on the real, on the final image. So here, I just uh, create uh, a folder named module. We don't know, care about the name. I copy everything in my folder there. Uh, I start, I, I move the, the current shell, if you want, to this module, and I just run the sdis command from the setup tools, which generate a package for me. Uh, this part, we don't need it. It's when you customize uh, the web. Now, I have a second step, which is from, uh, I reuse the Triton image, uh, but it's, it will be another image that I will uh, uh, modify and install inside it the, the custom uh, module. So here I, f I will, uh, I can uh, just replace by B2CK and B2CK. Just metadata that uh, can be embedded in the Docker uh, image. Uh, it's useful if you have a lot of image, if you want to search and understand from where this image comes from. Uh, I can set the version, uh, but uh, I think it's not useful. If I want to use another versioning shame than the uh, Triton uh, versioning, but but uh, important. Uh, I have to switch to the root user because by default, the Docker image of Triton doesn't run as root, but as a Triton user. So if I want to be able to install something on the Docker image, I, I need to be root uh, to install it on the right folder. So I switch to the root user. I copy here 
from my builder image, I just create above here, uh, the result of the uh, sdist uh, command. And I move it to a folder that I named dist. It's just uh, a convention. Uh, and then I run the pip, com uh, pip command to install everything that is in this dist uh, folder. For now, it will contain just the, the package of my uh, small module. And uh, as usual, uh, in, uh, when you make a Docker image, you want to make it the smallest possible. So you try to always clean what you have done uh, that you don't need anymore by uh, removing here the cache, because, because pip uh, install will uh, create a cache folder with everything that it downloads, but you don't want that in your final image. So uh, after each comment, you can clean everything, so it reduces the size of the, of the image. Uh, and this I don't need anymore. And after that, you can switch back to the Triton D user, like that the, by default the, the image will be will run with the Triton D user instead of the root. Okay? So um, yeah. it's so I just create this Docker file. Uh, you can reuse almost as is for uh, all your modules. It's uh, uh, standard and there is nothing special about the current module. Uh, the second point we do, usually we create a small uh, shell script that builds the image. And this script is uh, uh, rely on uh, the, the fact that we use Mercurial as a repository to take the tags the current tag uh, of the folder or of uh, the repository to tag it, to tag to, to use the same tag for the image I will publish uh, later, and, and and so on. Uh, it's just a way to simplify the, the the process of building an image. But uh, instead, I can also just run Docker build. And I use dot as the uh, the place where the Docker files uh, is defined, and I I think I can uh, uh, yeah Docker build dot, and I can give a name to to, to this image. So I will name it Bidusik. Uh, it's usual to prefix with uh, your username on Docker. Uh, I can name it Triton, let's say, to this way. If I just leave it like that, uh, the tag will be the latest image. So, uh, or I can put an, a number, uh, a version number, for example. So let's run it, and it's wrong. Uh, okay. What? Uh, yes. Okay. So now it's executing all the the commands. I put it in the Docker file. So you fetch, uh, create this here. You can see. You create. You, you see the the command is running. So you start with the. Triton image. Uh, here, he run. Uh, he run. Uh, he create the module folder. Copy everything in it. Start to work on this in this folder. Run the as this uh, commands. After that, he copy the result of the this uh, command to the new image. Uh, run pipe install on it. Install everything. And as I use the Triton D, uh, the Triton image, uh, of course, I have already Triton. I have already uh, the party module. 
and all the dependencies uh, need it. Uh, so nothing is, uh, everything is already there. But if you add on your modules a specific uh, dependency, it will also install it uh, from uh, PyPy. Uh, yeah, this is, you will see that there is an issue to build uh, the wheel image. Uh, indeed, you can ignore this uh, because we don't need uh, the wheel uh, image on it. Uh, I could not find how to remove this uh, small issue or invalid command uh, warning, but you just can ignore it because uh, uh, the installation is all uh, is correctly uh, processed. Um, and so now, if I look at my Docker images, so you have. Uh, when you have Docker installed it, you have a catalog of all images you can you have download from the internet and those you are you have built. Uh, I should see uh, somewhere uh, yeah. here. I have here is my image with the tag uh, five dot two dot zero. And I have an ID, which is a unique ID for, for this image. And the size, you have the size of the image. So it's not so big for everything that is inside. Um, so the next step, now I, I could start uh, Triton, like, like uh, run the image like that uh, inside Docker uh, manually. But it's a little bit uh, complicated to manage like that because you, you need also a database to, to run correctly. And if it's a real uh, installation, you need a cron job, a, a cron task that is running. Uh, if, you, yeah, if you are going to use the, the bus and you want to have the coroutine version, you need another uh, services running and so on. Uh, so to manage that at B2CK, we create another uh, repository, another folder, that we name it deploy. And in this uh, folder, we are going to use Docker Compose uh, setup. So it's a way to uh, organize dif different uh, Docker containers to work together inside uh, a common network and uh, the Docker uh, Compose can uh, manage to start and stop the instance uh, when you need. Uh, so for that, I will also uh, copy one from uh, an existing setup that uh, we use. So the Docker Compose configuration is a YAML file named Docker uh, Compose. Uh, so you have to define the version. So we use version two, but I think now you can use version three. I don't know exactly what changed since. Uh, but, uh, and after that, you define the services you are going to set up for this uh, installation. So the first is uh, we need a database. So I, I use the Postgres image. Uh, on uh, Docker Hub, the Postgres image is named Postgres, and you can pick a specific version. So I will use the version 10, which is um, a recent version. Uh, you can define the name of the database to use, so I will use them. So uh, using environment variables is the way to you configure your, uh, your services uh, that uh, this is the most common way to configure uh, a process uh, in running inside Docker. Um, after that, our database needs to write uh, data on the, on the file uh, to store it uh, and to keep it between uh, the r each run. So uh, data are stored uh, inside what is named a volume. 
Uh, it's a Docker stuff. If I, I can see all my volumes with this command, so I have many volume. And I can give a name to the volume because it's easier to, to manage later. So I create, I will create a two volume. And I, it, so here, the first part is the name uh, of the volume inside Docker. And the second, after the, uh, the double point, comma, after the comma, uh, it's where the volume is mounted on the image, on the Postgres image. So the data, Postgres write is data in, uh, in this path, so I, I mount I mount the volume to this path, okay? Uh, after that, we have the restart policy. Uh, as it's a service that we want to be always up, we use the always command for restart. So if for any reason Postgres uh, crash, uh, Docker Compose will automatically restart it. So you are uh, safe. The system uh, automatically heals himself. himself. Uh, the second point is I need to have Triton as a service. So I will use the image I just created. Uh, no, it was. This is the name. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, Triton. Okay. And uh, if you have followed it, the. The, the the news of the new release of Triton since I think this is 4.8 uh, we can configure Triton using uh, variable environment variables uh, instead of uh, configuration file and mainly this is a feature that was introduced in Triton to be able to use Triton in the Docker uh, way so the syntax is uh, every environment variable that starts with Triton D is uh, parsed by uh, the Triton process. After that, the f after the first uh, underscore, you have the section of the configuration. So here we configure the email section, and if you put a double underscore, you have the the real uh, configuration options where you set the value. So here we set the from of the email section in the Triton configuration to this email address. Uh, we could use uh, another one. Uh, up. Uh, you can configure like that your SMTP server uh, or some other configuration. Everything you can configure in Triton, you can configure from there. Uh, so, yeah, this is not useful for us. Uh, the next thing, uh, you can define, if you want to run Triton in, with a different uh, option than the default, you can always uh, use the, uh, the command tag to pass arguments to the Triton command. But indeed, we don't really need this uh, for our usage, no. So I will remove. Uh, Triton, we want to be able to access Triton. So by default, Triton listen on uh, the local host and on the port uh, 8,000. Uh, 8, uh, so what I going to say is that to bind eight, the port 8000 to the port 8000 uh, to the outside. So the first part is bind, uh, uh, it's the other way I think. Uh, yeah, I bind, uh, here it's the port of Triton inside the Docker. It's the port 8000. Uh, and I bind it on my local host also to, on the port 8000. So like that, I can access from the outside. Because by default, 
uh, inside the Docker Compose, the, the services are inside their own network, inside the, the machine, and they are not accessible from outside, except for what we declare, declare to be uh, available. Uh, as you may know, uh, Triton store the attachment in a folder. In a, by default, it's in var lib Triton D DB. DB. Uh, so I will create also a volume to, to keep those data uh, that are stored. Uh, the next point is that to run Triton, I need the Postgres so I can define a dependency on this service. So I, I say that Triton D depends on Postgres. So uh, Docker Compose will start first Postgres, wait that Postgres is running before starting Triton. Uh, and as a second step, uh, I also, if I want to use the, the cron, I will use the same image. So I, this ensure that uh, I run the same code for, from the, uh, the two process, the cron and the server. They are always in, uh, synchronized. Uh, so I, but uh, to run the cron, I, I need to run the Triton D cron command. So I define here the, that the command is not the default one. Uh, defined in the Docker image, but this one, and I will use the that I will define the database on which to connect. So it's the database I set up here in the Postgres uh, DB environment. Up and the same as we don't know, but maybe the cron a cron task need to access to the, that, the attachment. So I have to also attach the same volume to this image <coughs> of uh, Triton. Uh, so they shared both the same attachment. And it's also depend on Postgres, and we want always it to run. OK, and uh, so at the end, the volume I create, I have to define them as volumes. Uh, like that, Docker Compose know that uh, you can customize the volumes. Here, you can put some parameters about which kind of volumes and which kind of file system you are going to use for this volume. But by default, we, we can use the default uh, version. Uh, the next step is to set up Triton, you need to run the Triton administrator uh, command. And for that, we create a service that will just, uh, when it starts, launch the Triton D admin on the database, update all the modules, activate the missing dependency, like that. If I, have, uh, if I add on my uh, custom module, a new dependency to a new module of Triton, uh, it will be activated automatically. Uh, and after that, I just run a command that never ends. So uh, like that, for Docker comp Compose, Triton update uh, will not stop, because if the process stops, it's considered as a failure for Docker. Uh, so I've just here a small script that does nothing but keep a process uh, open, and on the status for uh, Docker Compose, it's still running, but do nothing. And here, still two minutes. What? Uh, thanks. Uh, and uh, the update, of, of course, depends on Postgres. And this one, we don't want it to restart. If for any reason it's, it crash, we don't want to retry to update. So we set the restart to no. Like that, it's, if there is a problem, uh, uh, nothing happened. And uh, here, it's, uh, we have finally uh, last uh, services. It's, it's a SMTP daemon. Uh, for demo, we, we have a fake SMTP image which run uh, an SMTP server, but that never sent any email outside. It just print what you receive in the cons console log. Uh, so it's 
quite useful when you are doing demo. So you can send email, but they are never going outside. Uh, and so you, you don't care. You, are no, you have no fear to use the real email address and stuff like that. It's not going to, to talk to the outside. And this is, and so uh, a small thing is that to, to let Triton to talk to this SMTP server, I have configured it here the, SM, the URI for this. So this is the protocol, SMTP. Uh, I think it should be like that, SMTP. <laughs> and after that, I put the host name, SMTPD. Uh, this host name me uh, refer to the name here of the service. So automatically, Docker Compose will uh, replace this value uh, or will create an host name that uh, convert SMTPD into the real Im uh, IP address of the service running. So you, uh, inside the small network, you, you can refer with the name of the services as if it's the uh, DNS uh, record. Okay? So now that we have this, we can start uh, the Docker uh, environment. So for that, we use the docker compose uh, command. And we can just r say up means start. So by default, it starts to create, uh, OK. Uh, ah, yes. Uh, uh, what happens is that if you don't specify a tag, by default, the tag is latest. But indeed, the image I created, I put a tag 5.0.2.0. Uh, so uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I will, an image can have multiple tags. So I will just tag this image with the la latest tag. Uh, latest, OK. So now Docker Compose will be able to find it. And it starts. So when you run up, you, uh, it doesn't go into background. Uh, okay. yeah, the first time is a little bit uh, strange because the cron and, uh, is running, but the database is not yet uh, set up. Uh, yeah, I can probably show you on another terminal, what is going on? So project to deploy. So I can see the the process that are running. So for now, I have uh, the Postgres running. Uh, automatically, Docker Compose generate an, uh, a name for these uh, containers that are running. Uh, it's based on the name of the project. So here it's the name of the, uh, of the folder and the name of the service. And you have one because you can run, ask Docker Compose to start more than one uh, services for the same, uh, one, more than one process for the same service. But uh, we don't need that for now. And you can see that the cron is restarting because he failed, he crashed, because the database is not yet uh, set up. Uh, and But it seems there is something wrong uh, with the Triton update. Um, OK. Uh, yeah, that's a, a small issue uh, on the first setup. Because Postgres, when it, the, it starts, uh, it's not directly ready to accept connection and creation of database. Uh, so the update services started, tried to connect to the database, but failed. So I have to, rest, uh, to restart it uh, to make it create the database. Uh, OK. 
So now it's uh, running. I can see the log uh, like that. Uh, Uh, ah, yeah, no. OK. Uh, I know what is wrong. <laughs> uh, indeed, I have to, I cannot run just the update like that. Uh, I have first to create the, the database manually. So what I'm going to do is just start uh, Postgres in background. Uh, pop up. OK. So in the Docker Compose, I've just Postgres running, and all the others are stopped. Uh, once I have Docker, this one, I can uh, run on the Triton version, the Triton admin. Uh, just to look at the, the documentation. Uh, so to set up the database, I just have to run Triton the admin. Okay. Uh, I don't need to specify database or, okay. Seem that you cannot connect to the database. Uh, small interruption. Uh, we have yeah. one hour. Um, do you prefer a uh, small break? Yeah. Fifteen minutes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Give me a sign. Yeah, it's good. Fifteen minutes. Okay. We see our spec uh, at half past three. Ben, je sais pas. <rire> ah ouais.
OK, so <laughs> back to <laughs> the setup. Indeed, the difficult part when you start is to set up the database. You have all your Docker uh, Compose services and so on. So the way to start is f first to uh, start the Postgres, only Postgres services. So uh, I can verify that it's running correctly. Uh, so now here we, I can see it's accepting connections. So I can start to connect to it. And instead of running all the process and every, every, every services trying to access and create logs and stuff like that, indeed, I have to run the Triton admin command uh, once for the, for the setup to update uh, and to set up the database. And I have to run with this command. So uh, the run means execute uh, a command. Uh, I mean, I, I set up no depths because I have already run the Postgres, and I don't want this command to start other uh, services. <coughs> the tag here, uh, dash dash rm, is to remove this container once he has finished to do his job. Uh, I run the Triton uh, service. I use the image of the Triton service. It's up to, I can use Triton update also, but it doesn't matter as long as it's, it's a Triton image. And the Triton, the admin with the, uh, the, conf the database uh, setup and uh, the all flags to update everything. The tricky part is that. Uh, you have to run first uh, at least once with the run command because at the end of the process of database creation, uh, Triton will ask for uh, a user, uh, a password for the admin user, and for that you need to have uh, a console open. And so if you run it in background, you, have, you cannot have this console and set up the, the, user name, the password for the admin user. So now if I run it, you see that it's the usual logs when you create uh, the database. Okay. Yeah. So everything is set up. And now it asks me for the email, email address for, for the admin and the password. Now it's done, and now I can use the up command with dash d to put it in background, in background as a daemon. So it will start all the other uh, services. And now I can go to my browser and I have the this Triton running. Uh, so I can configure, I will skip that. Next, here, and I should find my custom module that I can activate here and perform the activation. So I can see, I think, the logs of Triton. Uh, yeah, we see only the, the request, so it's not very uh, interesting. So it tells me that, yes, yeah, set up everything. It's a little bit slow because it has to uh, load all the, uh, the countries and uh, the subdivision. But otherwise, here I have my field from the custom module. OK. <laughs> uh, the next point, so I have my Docker Compose uh, set up. I can run Docker Compose up at any time. And it will just check if the image is up to date or not, and if you need to, uh, to update the running uh, uh, code or not. Um, 
And so I can make, let's make a, a small change uh, on the module and build a new, ver uh, a new image for it. Uh, I don't know, maybe uh, the label is not nice. Uh, uh, I just change for two. Now I can uh, build a new version. And I will tag it uh, also. Uh, let's call it like that. So I re rebuild, I change the source code, rebuild the image. Now I have a new image in my library. Usually, you, you can also push it to uh, the Docker Hub uh, if you want. And if I go back to my deploy uh, folder, and I run Docker Compose up again. Uh, it detects automatically that the image is different. And so it restarts what needs to be restarted. It can take a little some time. Yeah, no. And now if I refresh the browser and I go to the party and see the form, and now we see that the, the code has been updated because now I have the only tomb as a label and no more the tomb field. So this way, it's pretty easy. You set up your, your server, and uh, you just need to have to, to, to call up uh, uh, on a, with a cron, for example. And uh, as developers, you develop on your machine. You build uh, the image. You can test the image and then push, uh, publish it to the Docker Hub. Uh, you, to publish, you just uh, use the push command. And uh, automatically, on your server, uh, at some point, you will fetch the new version and set up it. Uh, run the update, because we have here in the, the Docker Compose the update services. So it's restart. Each time the image change, these services will be restarted uh, and update all the database. So if you have made some change on the database scheme, it will be up to date. And uh, the, the services is uh, the, uh, available uh, as soon uh, as the update is finished. Uh, and so what we do is, uh, for very simple uh, setups, on this uh, deployment, uh, we have a small script that we name update.sh uh, uh, that we run on in the cron that it first pull all the image because pulling the image can be a little bit long and if you just run docker compose up uh, it's first stop the, the running process fetch the new image and restart them and if you want to minimize the downtime, it's better to uh, fetch first the new image and then run up uh, the up commands. And like that, it just stops the existing image and restart the, with the new one. So you minimize the downtime you have for just for the update. Uh, yeah, that's a pretty simple uh, script. And for what we do also is to have a backup uh, shell script that make a backup of the database and the data uh, that are on Docker and store it inside uh, a backup folder on the machine, which can be then uh, synchronized uh, and backup on, on external uh, services. And for that, uh, uh, yeah, we, we use Docker Run to backup uh, the file store. And we use just uh, the, a busy box image, which contain the tar and uh, the tar uh, executable. And we just generate a tar file for all the folder. And for the backup of the database, we just exec execute on the Postgres image uh, using the Postgres user. So this is the Postgres image. The Postgres user, we run pgdump and we pipe uh, the output into uh, the backup folder. That's uh, yeah. When you pipe 
when you run Docker execute, the pipe you put here is uh, not inside the Docker uh, image, but outside. So it's a way to move uh, data from the Docker uh, container outside it and on the real uh, server. And so usually what we do is for production server setup, the update is run once every night, uh, usually at 2 o'clock. And we run also the backup, uh, maybe. Uh, I, I think we run first the backup at 2 o'clock and the uh, update at 3 o'clock, like that. We have uh, a backup uh, every day and an update uh, every night. And on usually, we have also a testing server for the customer where we push, uh, we publish a testing image for uh, validation. And then we have the, the update cron that run every hour or every half hour to to get to be sure that the user are testing the last version of uh, the development. Uh, yeah, I think that's all. If there is questions. Ah, uh, yeah, uh, we do that manually. Uh, so migrate from one series to another series of Triton. It means maybe having to run a script, a migration script, or stuff like that. Uh, we do not automate that. So during the process of developing and uh, on daily base or bug fix uh, stuff, we always stay on the same series. And changing from one series to another series, uh, we consider that as a special case that we are going to manage manually. Uh, uh, so at, at some point, it means we will just uh, execute uh, uh, yeah. uh, on the Postgres so exec user Postgres, you can uh, with this command you you have access to the Postgres shell and you can uh, uh, run any uh, any queries like you do when you have your database on your host. So you can uh, prepare your SQL script for migration, pipe it to the PSQL uh, command line, and then uh, publish your new image using the new version of Triton. Uh, so this you, you do that by changing the Docker file, the version here. And you build your new image, update. Uh, with Docker Compose, and that's all. <laughs> so, yeah. Ah. <laughs> uh, up to now, uh, we have not yet the case, but I guess. Uh, we will do the simple way. We will make a backup, change the image, and restore the backup on it. That's the easiest, the easy way. Uh, but of course, uh, you have to do uh, the backup uh, in uh, plain text and not in the binary format, because I think it's not compatible with, with uh, upgrade. Uh, yeah. I, I know that it's possible. There is some Docker image that are published, which contain both versions, and you can you, uh, run the PG update script. Uh, I'll never try it yet for now. Uh, but this kind of setup is for small databases, uh, for, for uh, companies with uh, a small amount of user and uh, not too much data. So the dump, restore, step is, is OK, as long as you don't have. Uh, 
What? Yeah, okay. Yeah, but that's the the issue with Postgres, with the upgrade of Postgres. Uh, it's always a little bit tricky for now. They have no in-place upgrade, so yeah, it's a, it's a step you have any way to manage even if you are not in Docker. And at some point, Docker is not really the problem here. Usually, uh, the deploy folder is also a, a repository uh, that you manage uh, and uh, update. And of course, you don't want to store in those repository your secret keys and, and so on. Uh, Docker uh, Compose can read on, uh, variables from a, a dash, a, a dot of uh, uh, file inside the Docker, uh, the, the same folder. And then I inside, you can put your secret uh, value. And in the Docker Compose, if I remember correctly, uh, you can, let's say, you have here, uh, for example, the Stripe uh, secret key. And you can say it's. Uh, equals to, I think it's secret, like that. I think this is the syntax. So it, it will read the dot file and replace in your Docker file the, with the right value. Uh, and of course, the dot vof, you don't put it in your repository. Just to be, uh, the syntax is, is like that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, because I think it's not useful with this kind of setup. Uh, as Docker Compose run on the same machine, uh, and uh, the Triton. D is run with uh, MicroWSGI uh, by default. Uh, you can configure MicroWSGI to run to uh, to create multiple process. Uh, and so, if you want more power, you create more process, and that's the same. So it's easier to increase the MicroWSGI the number of process MicroWSGI is managing, than to create multiple instances of Triton D and have some kind of load balancing in front, at the end, you, you are, it's more complex and you win nothing. Of course, it will be different if you, uh, if you have multiple machines and you want to, dis to dispatch to multiple uh, hosts. Uh, yeah, so. Uh, indeed, MicroWSGI, you doesn't need to have a, a configuration file. You, you can pass arguments. Uh, I don't know if I have MicroWSGI here. Yeah. Uh, every uh, possible option of MicroWSGI is available as uh, an option. So usually, you will uh, increase, you will run uh, in your Docker Compose, if you want to run Triton D uh, with more processes, uh, we have uh, this specific case that uh, 
the entry point of Triton, if the common pass to it start with a dash, it consider its uh, parameters for the microwizg uh, command. So you can just, I think it's processes. Uh, I think it's this uh, this way. No, process. Yeah. Wait. Uh, up. HTTP processes. And I update. Uh, uh, it's command without S. So now I recreate only the Triton services because I just change it command line there. And Okay. <coughs> mm. It's not, uh, I think there is no equal. Just processes. I guess I have not the same microwizg version. So basically, it's just, uh, additional arguments to the. Uh, added to the microwizg uh, command. Mm -hmm. uh, now it's working, and I, maybe I can show. Uh, this didn't start 10. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But I guess it's because uh, I know it's a uh, what? Ah, oh, it's a cheap. Yeah. So um, the di this is the default microbiski. So there is cheaper options, which means it start only one by default. So I. If I want really more, much more by default, I can. It's cheaper, cheaper, cheaper. Equal five, for example. Oh, yeah. It's wrong. It should be equal. And up, 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 up. Yeah, and now I have five microwizg running process because I ask for five and it can go up to ten if I make a lot of queries. So this is easy to, to scale on one host. Uh, after, if you have more than one host, then you probably need to use something else than Docker Compose, which is more complex. Ah, uh, Rancher? Sorry? Rancher, I think. Rancher, to manage uh, a kind of cluster of Docker. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Docker provides a way and it's compatible with Docker Compose. Yeah, okay. So you can uh, configure it to deploy to the serial port and using labels to say, okay, this kind. The label you put on the image. Or in the compose, you can say that if, if, if it has this level, it has to go to force with this level. Yeah. It should be easy to move to. Yeah. Okay. So, do we have more questions? Swarm. Ah, wait, swarm, swarm, yeah. So, thank no? you very much. Yeah.